order for February 22nd. Welcome everyone. Now we'll start off today with a land acknowledgement. Uh, the town of Innisfail acknowledges that we are meeting on Treaty 7 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Kenai, Pakani, Siksika, as well as the Sutina First Nation and Stony Nakota First Nation. We acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We make this acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside on. I'd also like to acknowledge that uh, tomorrow is Pink Shirt Day in, in Canada, which is why we are all wearing our pink shirts today. So um, looking forward to the community getting behind that tomorrow. So are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, could I please have someone make a motion to adopt the agenda as presented, please? Mayor Barkley, I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dunham, all in favor? Thank you. So we will move on to our delegation. We have Bob McKinney and Tom Reinhardt here on behalf of the Lions Club. So welcome and come on up to the, uh, the front here, get a microphone turned on for you. We get to, if we so choose, is that our you, call? You, you can leave that off, yeah. You're okay with it? Yes. Thank you. It's a little easier to speak that way. You go ahead. <laughs> Better up. Um, before we start, just uh, since council seems to be um, able to pass all kinds of uh, legislation over and above your pay grade, I'd just like to uh, make a request that, uh... okay, I think. We're good. Thank you. We just need the, the mic, Bob, so that people recording. online can, can hear what's going on. Gotcha. Thanks. In any case, my request is um, pass a, please pass a law that after January 31st, minus 30 is not allowed. Um, in back and forth with um, some of the town um, personnel, we thought it would be easier if we actually uh, attended here rather than trying to email back and forth regarding questions regarding especially the um, Dodds Lake project and what council thinks about it, um, whether we um, are to renew it, uh, because if we are to renew, we require a uh, letter of support from this body for um, Alberta, uh, Alberta environment. So that was the first thing. Um, that actually, that's the, the, the primary thing that we wanted to ask you about what your thoughts were and uh, whether to support that. So could you give us a little background about how you felt things went last summer? There's certainly lots of activity on the lake with fishing and... Yes, absolutely. Um, Maybe not I think Tom fishing. was down there more often than I was. Um, Councillor Don, of course, is very close. Um, so, you know, you observed it on a daily basis. Certainly issues that everybody seems to be aware of, of course, is the um, increased traffic. Um, when I've gone down there, people were delighted. Um, certainly there were you know, a lot of controversy in terms of out-of-towners visiting and whether they are welcomed or not as per media, <laughs> media comments, et cetera. Um, but uh, people that I talked to, they all had big smiles on their faces. But um, just before I forget, I've been in touch with uh, one of the concerns when we did made the initial proposal. Uh, one of the concerns was, so if we do have a significant winter kill, what then? Like we don't wanna have a big mess there. And in conversation with uh, Bob Lenny, president of the NSL Fish and Game, he had said, if, if it needs help, we are more than willing to um, assist with any potential cleanup. I expect there will be some winter kill, but um, we have no idea how many fish were actually caught out of there and where the carp have come from and how they seem to be surviving. I have no idea. Like there seems to be thousands of them in there. They're, 
folks that are pulling them out are one after the other. So uh, we did see some, in fact, when I was down there one time, um, a fellow caught a trout, unhooked it, threw it back and kept fishing for carp. <laughs> so go figure, right? Um, so I, comments? Okay, just to clarify about Dodds Lake, it's the fish that we're here about. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm assuming that the Lions Club would like to continue on with the, the program and. Yeah. Both Innisfail Fish and Game and the Lions Club. And the, the thing is, we need to know now because we have to order the fish. Okay. And so in order to have them for the May long weekend, we have to order them now. So that's why we're asking for. Does anyone else have any questions or comments, <clears throat> Councillor Bates? Yeah, I. Um, it, it 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 all happened at once out there. It was kind of funny how it all came together. I think the carp got in there before, long before you guys put the, the trout in there, and I think they had their own draw of fishermen. And then, yeah, I don't personally have any concerns. Um, I I think I saw backup information here that you were looking to put 500 in this this year is that fish and game asked when i talked to them this spring about that and they were interested in upping the numbers and they wanted to contribute to the yeah to the cost of that so i don't personally have any concern um and i do enjoy the dodds lake from my back deck um i would suggest just a off just a suggestion that you work with our and put a little sign up somewhere and have a phone number when you catch a trout so that you have an idea how many were caught because uh yeah i can't imagine of the 300 odd that went in there last year and if they all died i don't think you'd have a cleanup problem i i really don't no i think the lake will absorb you know they'll absorb a lot of dead tissue in. yeah and with your offer i don't have any concern whatsoever a comment from a biologist um, that I spoke with uh, had indicated nature does not like to leave good high quality protein sitting around, i.e. gulls, etc. right? So even if there are some floating around, I suspect that mother nature will get to them before we, we need to, we'll see. Councillor Harrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barkley, and thank you to the delegation for, for coming forth and the project of last summer. And yes, I do live very close. I just live across the street. And the comments that I received were, were all positive. I, I didn't receive any, any negative comments. And maybe it was just the, you know, the people that were there the day that I went over to, to visit with them. Uh, yes, carp is, is a prime draw there. And, uh, but the trout... What I look at is there's a lot of young people that that come down to the lake and many of them were camping up up top there and you know they'd come down in the evening with their parents or grandparents and they would they would fish and uh, I don't think they really care what they what they catch as long as they catch a fish. I did see some trout caught uh, a matter of five or six that I actually saw they were nice looking fish. So uh, I certainly don't have any problems with it. Uh, the traffic, uh, there is a bit of a congestion there. There was a couple of weekends during the summer that it was pretty chaotic. But I think if we maybe just uh, put up a sign or something, you know, park this way, because the first one in is usually where they set their, uh, the, the parking strategy. So if you can get the first guy lined up, then all the rest sort of fall into place. So that, that would be my suggestion. I'd certainly like to continue with the project because I believe we've created an expectation in the community and it's, got, and it's a good ex expectation. You know, it's, uh, you know I, I see maybe the fishing game club, there's a, we have quite a fly fishery to the west of Innisfil and some of the streams and rivers. And uh, that's a great place to learn how to fly fish. There's, <laughs> there's no trees around that you need that you're gonna get hooked up. So maybe that's something that the Fish and Wildlife or the Fish and Game Club could look at, you know, uh, putting on some lessons or workshops for, for fly fishing. But uh, overall, I think it was, it was well received and I certainly support you going forth and uh, anything that I can do to help out, that would, that's great. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mayor Barkley. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. 
Councillor Highstead. Yeah, um, I'm going to echo a lot of uh, what Dawn has said, but I think the uh, the traffic flow and that uh, we should be looking at that as well as some of the parking things. Um, you know, the, some of those issues, but what I thought was really cool out walking 536 in the morning during the week and you had people from lining up to, to fish in Innisfil and I think that COVID has allowed um, you know, people are, are trying to be more active. And I think this was a real positive thing for our community as to people coming outside of the community. I think that was a, a bonus as well. So thanks for, for the work that you've done in, on that project. And I fully support it. Thank you, Councillor Highstead. CEO Becker, can we make a motion for a letter of support or do we have to wait till council next week? Mayor Burke, you can enact that, uh, that motion. We would put it in the private CAO report just to finalize it, but you can certainly move this forward today if you like. Okay. Would somebody be willing to, Councillor Bates, did you have something else? To say? I did yeah. have to, something else. I think we're going to have to take a bit of a, a role here in the parking because it's not just the fishing, it's it's kayakers and paddle boarders and, and people just stopping there to take pictures. And so I think at some point the town is gonna have to take some role in that. And uh, yes, there is a lot, a lot of traffic at times and it's not all fishing. And um, I believe, you know, we have the Dodds Lake plan that's to be determined whether or not it rises to the priority of getting done, but I think we might have to work on, we might have to work on some parking issues, even if it's uh, temporary stuff that doesn't uh, include the whole Dodds Lake plan. And Councillor Wing. Thanks, Mayor Barkley. Um, thanks, Tom and Bob for coming to see us today on this cold day. I agree with Bob, we should get right on the weather thing. Um, I agree with my colleague, Councillor Bates. Um, the parking issue is definitely something that we need to address. Um, and it is in the, the Dodds Lake plan and hopefully we can get that funding straightened out and we can get on that as soon as possible. But on that note, Mayor Barkley, I would like to make a motion please that we provide a letter of support from council um, approving the 2022 stocking of the fish in Dodds Lake. Thank you, Councillor Ring. Any further discussion, comments? No, all in favor? There you go. Don't look so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just as a point, uh, last year we put in basically 300. The guy gave us, the way they do it is they don't actually count the fish. They sell you fish by the inch, but they scan them with a mass scanner that tells them how how massive the fish is and then they decide how long it is from that and then that's how they decide how to charge it which is weird but anyway um so because the count is not perfect as far he gave us 330 fish what he thought was 330 to make sure he had um the biologist actually gave us a license for 500 last year so if in your letter of of if you're going to mention a number, uh, the 500 might be might be the best one if you're okay with that, because Fish and Game has indicated that they would like to up the number a little bit. I'm not crazy about upping it too much till we have that first spring result, so that we don't have yeah. you know like if we got 200 fish right on that sandy beach, I wouldn't be you know I wouldn't be ideal. I mean we plan to clean them up and that sort of thing, um, and probably our major adversary of this I think has moved from across the street uh, hopefully I'm not sure and so if that's the case then it won't be quite as bad but uh, certainly we intend to clean it up if there is a problem but um, all indication is that 200 fish would the lake would just absorb them anyway so okay all right so Councillor Harrison uh, thank you Mayor Barclay just following up on that uh, Tom are fish and game, they're not doing any oxygen studies this winter, are they? No, we didn't. We didn't. didn't. Uh, we didn't. Bob Lenny and myself, we went out with his fishing auger and uh, did sampling mm -hmm. um, in February, a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, got, got all the results and stuff yeah. from that. We thought, yeah. you know, we'll see in terms of winter kill. But there's a deep section there. We're talking about uh, three, four meters yeah. uh, that wouldn't freeze. 
wouldn't that freeze down that deep. So when we did the ice augering, it was down a good meter, like it was the full length of his auger, which was at least a meter. So it was it was pretty thick. But uh, we did hit water, and that's um, you know that's if it's only a meter thick through the majority of it, there's a good potential for three meters of actual water out in the middle where the old race track apparently used to be. So mm -hmm. we'll find out. It's an adventure. Okay. We okay. kind of were leaving it up to the fish to tell us if there was enough oxygen. <laughs> 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 that's going to be the real deal you know, a bunch of them die and end up on the shore yeah. that's the only ugly ugly scenario of this whole thing as far as I'm concerned I'm working yeah. on Duolingo for German but I didn't know trout was a possibility speaking uh, drought <laughs> oh. yeah yeah it's pretty important to saturated oxygen that's for sure so <clears throat> yeah great I guess one further question Mayor Barkley would be and this is out there but has there been thought about putting some type of aeration into the lake or is it too I'm, cost prohibitive or? I'm totally against aeration. Okay. The problem with that is it creates a weak spot in the ice. And then with kids being in town, have access to that lake without supervision. Mm -hmm. If one fell in, that wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth all of the fish in the world. No, nope, totally like, agree, you know, totally agree. So that's where I'm against the aeration yeah. part. Yeah. We investigated significantly and Fish and Game has done studies on aeration in other places mm -hmm. and it definitely was something that we investigated um, but as Tom said even if you roped off that area um, you're still leaving yourself you know people mm -hmm. you know like hey let's try this and that's a legal liability not only for well it's town property but also it's, it's us involved <laughs> yeah. as well right yeah Okay, no, thank you very much. Yeah, I think even the ice as is, is somewhat of a liability because it is a stormwater pond. I you know a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, there was a tractor that went through the ice. So you never know. But um, Councillor Maceres, did you want to add something? Thanks, Mayor Barclay. I just wanted to say, I was at, um, I, think, I think it was Pickle Lake one day when they were releasing the trout into the lake. It was quite a spectacle. It was a lot of fun to watch. And um, but they put them into like a little bit further into the lake because they're too small to fish when they get in. Is that the case with these ones too? Will well, there be a period our, of time before they're big enough to fish? We try to buy fish that are big enough to catch when you drop them in the lake that day. And in fact, within 20 minutes, there was somebody just down the shoreline <laughs> caught one. So put they had traveled that quickly, you know. Um, so that's the idea because we can't count on them. A, if they're going to winter kill, they're not even going to, they'll never, get, if we put in fingerlings, they'll never get big enough to, to catch, you know. So the idea was to put in not very many, but expensive fish, I guess. What, um, what were they? So they were catching. But well, they were inch? supposedly seven fish? to nine and eight to 10 <laughs> is what we paid for. But it was probably the most underwhelming thing I ever experienced was when they dumped them into the lake because they were in a tube and you couldn't see a six inch fish in that tube as far as I was concerned, but, uh, but apparently the, they were fat enough that they, they were nine inch fish. Yeah, it sounds like a fish story, that's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so, well, we have a motion on the table. Did, did you need uh, that amended at all, CO Becker with the 500 in it? We're good, okay. If every, everyone in favor? <clears throat> okay, carried unanimously. Thank you so much for coming today. Okay. We appreciate it. Uh, we so do box. have one other. You have more? Okay, sorry. Uh, the uh, soapbox derby. So we're hoping to do that again this year. We have set a date as the 23rd of July with a backup date of the 6th of August if it's uh, outrageously storming on the 23rd of July. And you want another council entry, do you? Uh, like last time? No, no, no okay. we're good there. Uh, okay. We've already <laughs> we've already got your car, and it's still uh, okay. it's still serviceable, so it's uh, perfect. That's fine. Um, we just wanted, you know, I guess approval or what you felt, how you guys felt about us going ahead with the derby again this year. We and, would sorry, and then we know now that we have to put in a, a special events application through that we did realize was the case. In the past, when we got your permission, we thought we were 
golden in the way we went. <laughs> I don't know. Personally, I would just say I, I was there that day. It was a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm yeah. Well, we look to forward see, to love to more, see you do it more again. More council members at the Derby this year, maybe. And yeah. um, so, the, you know, the cars yeah. that we built that were sponsored, um, we, we have 16 of those, and uh, the mayor and his wife raced each other down. Yeah, I know. In those there. last year, <laughs> not not last year clearly, but it's a tradition. <laughs> just saying, it is a tradition. <laughs> Trust me, this one will go a lot faster than the last one. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so I, I don't think we, we really need a motion for this. I think you just deal with the uh, town administration and put in your application and yeah. things will be good to go. And like I said, we certainly look forward to it. It was a lot of fun last time. So we'll be nicer to work with this time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so will we. <laughs> Maybe unfortunately to some degree. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So the other thing I just, uh, as kind of the manager and, and committee member for the campground, I just would like to thank the town for uh, extending us another uh, lease on that for another five to 10 years. Uh, so I just approve that. Appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, I guess this is a good time to ask those two. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Just, uh, just a comment. Uh, the campground locations, there's a lot of aspen. Uh, it's primarily aspen. There's no coniferous like spruce or pine trees there. So has there been any thought about maybe under planting uh, with a school group or something amongst that aspen? And as the aspen, because aspen only lives about 60 years and then it starts to deteriorate and fall down. And if uh, it may sucker back, it may not. But yep. thinking out, if we planted or if you planted underplanted spruce or pine, it would. They need a shade crop to to establish, so that aspen would do that. And then over time, as things fell down, then you would have a coniferous base. Just a thought. We yeah. actually have planted some spruce trees in the last two years, uh, mostly around the perimeter. We have problems with people wanting to go into the campground from the street. Uh -huh. um, and the problem is they aren't considered enough that if somebody's living there, they just walk through anyway. <laughs> or they just walk in there and start picking Saskatoons oh. while they're eating supper. Just yeah. hard to believe that Innisfailians would do that, but <laughs> I can tell you they do. Um, so we've tried to plant some spruce trees wherever there are gaps where they can walk through and try to encourage the thorns and stuff to grow in between the spruce trees. Um, there are some spruce trees uh, naturally growing in amongst those aspen. Uh, I personally, I like the aspen because it creates a better curtain than the spruce trees would if we were to have too many spruce trees and not have any aspen. So uh, we're using spruce trees to try and block access, but uh, we haven't really planted any more uh, one of our longtime campers did come and plant one as a memorial uh, to one of his kids because they camped here a lot and they caretake the place for nine years at one time. So, uh, but other than that, that's what spruce trees we put in so far. Okay, nope, thank you. Um, no, I think good questions, Don. Uh, I, you know, my comment is I was I used to be on council previously before Lions had taken over. So I just want to commend uh, Lions for the work that you've done over the years. And uh, it's been great. Um, I'm just being new to council again is I always see that place full um, as most of the people coming from out of town, of course, or are they nearby when they're, they're coming in? I'm just kind of curious about that and how maybe we can use that uh, positive energy from people coming out of town uh, to promote Innisfail. I think there's some synergy that we can use there. So just thought I'd throw it at you. There are some Google reviews and so on. Um, it was going to uh, an essentially unused email address that I've resurrected. And uh, it's now one of five that come to my phone. <laughs> but um, whenever a review is posted, um, I get notified and I've been responding to them. Um, the majority of them are positives. The only real major negative one was somebody that bicycled here in the middle of COVID 
and wanted to do tenting. And at that point we weren't allowing tenting. So we did a one star hate the place, da, da, da. but then he ended it with an LOL. So I don't know, but by and large, there's a lot of five star reviews posted on there. So that's good. All right. Well, thank you again for coming today and um, for all you do in the community. You're a great community partners and uh, we look forward to the summer and fishing and soapbox derbying, I guess. Maybe we could get one each. Right? We could have the race. Anyway, I digress. It has to be heats because they're only three at a time, but we have lots of cars. You make an exception. <laughs> forgot, to, forgot to mention as well, um, we had had a request regarding the sponsorship for the van coming and we have as treasurer i have to write a check soon um for ten thousand yes we're, we're posting so yeah and thank you very much for that as well it's a very generous donation for sure that's why we're here okay thank thanks you very much time. thanks thanks you guys Okay, we will move on to 4.1, uh, Bella Vista, CAO Becker, please. So Mayor Barkley, uh, the delegates um, are scheduled to come on through Zoom. Uh, they're not quite ready to, to go forward. Um, they are now on, Mayor Barkley, and uh, <laughs> we're ready to introduce our next delegation. <laughs> um, let's kind of give a second here. and. I am there. Hey there. Hi guys, are you there? Yeah, we're here. Okay, uh, Mary Council, I'd like to introduce um, our, our uh, kind of continue on our engagement with some of our uh, key stakeholders in the community. Um, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Creation Communities uh, who have come into our community a few years ago um, and developing out the, the Bella Vista subdivision. I'd like to introduce Taryn Singh, um, and I'm not sure um, that's Taryn. I'll just let you introduce yourself, Taryn. I'm not yeah, sure. sure. I'm, uh, my name is uh, Taryn Singh. I'm the project manager for on behalf of Creation Communities. And next to me is the owner of the company, Gobi Singh. Yeah, I'm, uh, hi, I'm Gobi Singh. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO of the company. Hey, well, welcome and thank you for joining us today. So is there a presentation that, uh, or what is... I believe uh, uh, Mayor and Council, it's a more of an engagement conversation. Okay. There's no PowerPoint presentation, more of a conversation about uh, creation communities and Bella Vista of subdivision and uh, where we're, where they're at and, and where they're going type of thing. So sure. Well, maybe we can let uh, Goby and, and Taryn then Absolutely. start sure. and they can tell us where things are at with Bella Vista and, and we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you, your worship, uh, respected members of council. This is uh, Goby. So we took on Bella Vista a few years ago, um, as, as some of you may know. Uh, we've gotten phase one developed with 44 lots and there's a <clears throat> four acre commercial component to that as well. And uh, so it, it's, been, it's been a bit of an experience for us because we're, we're involved in uh, six other subdivisions uh, or communities in different areas within the province. And, um, in our past history, I mean, we've built out most of West Airdrie and Northwest Calgary and Northeast Calgary and other parts. So, um, you know, we came into Innisfil and, and it's been it's been uh, kind of a learning experience for us as well. But overall, I think we're doing fine. Um, one of the things we've realized or a few things we've realized kind of <clears throat> it's been actually quite a pleasure in working with the town. I think the town's been very supportive and helpful in uh, different situations especially from a timing standpoint. So that's real positive. Um, we are presently, um, our density within the town under the present ASP, the Bella Vista Area Structure Plan, density is sitting at, at 5.2. Uh, 
And having gone through this last couple, three years experience in, in, in uh, working within the town of Innisfil from a selling standpoint, we're competing with a lot of um, older homes as well. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the data, we, uh, the, the data we pulled off from last year, there were approximately 200 home sales in Innisfil, uh, out of which um, 54 were priced in between 370 all the way up to 700. So essentially the pricing sweet spot is around the high 300s and low 400s. So when one thinks about all of that, and we, we, we've seen some, uh, it's a mixture. We've seen some uh, seniors or baby boomers, like I am one of them retiring, seniors, I'm a senior. Um, and then we've seen young families also come and purchase homes. So some of the thoughts we had was that we probably need to revisit the kind of densities that is allowed under the, under the town bylaws. <clears throat> And probably start getting into a little slightly higher density, which can attract affordability and, and thus people and families into the area. So those were some of our thoughts. Um, the, the, the other thought that we had was, which is a bit of a discussion point, I suppose, uh, all, of, all of these thoughts are discussion points, was um, the municipalities we operate under which is all the way from Calgary, Leduc, Crossfield, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are considered a tier one developer because we've got tons of experience. And because of that, uh, we are required to put up a bond for our work that we undertake, not a letter of credit. So you may want to give that some thought because it does letter of credits, um, depending on how they're structured, can become quite onerous for certain developers. We're, we're fine with either way, but we are qualified for bonding in all our other municipalities to date. And some of them weren't, and then they came around. For example, City of uh, Leduc, um, we had taken over a subdivision from them and cleaned it all up. And so they were really quite happy with us and we moved forward and they gave us the same rating as City of Calgary does. So. That's, that's a plus. So I'll just leave some of those thoughts for you and just uh, wide open for any questions because uh, I'm sure those that'll, that'll start the conversation further. Well, th thank you for that, Colby. Those are two very interesting points. And, um, you know, just so you're aware, some discussion we have certainly had around the council table is density. And uh, we, we know we are in dire need of some more affordable housing, maybe townhouses, but... Um, I'm not sure if you're considering putting that into your phase one. I, I know, I, I believe it's all designed for single family, but um, I, I would think, you know, we'd certainly be open to seeing more of a, a mix in that phase one, if that's possible. And, and I also your second comment on the, the bond versus, versus uh, letter of credit. Thanks for that. I'm um, sure administration can, look into that I, I know I believe when you came along we lowered the uh, requirement on the the line of credit to try to be more competitive with other communities but um, you know we certainly want to make sure that we're we're doing the right thing and um, so this information is, is valuable for us yeah just to add to that a little bit uh, an answer to a bit of your question there uh, <clears throat> we're um, we're going to be reviewing densities, uh, not for this phase, I think, because we're more than half sold in this phase. And then with uh, the way the market is, I think, you know, we're going to do fine moving forward with this phase. But as we we're starting to plan our next phase, and I think that's where we want to take up this density question uh, where we um, you're absolutely right. I mean, we're, we're, we're thinking of uh, bringing on uh, townhouses, um, brownstones, essentially, it's a fancy name for townhouses that don't have condo fees, they're fee simple, so individual ownership. Um, and also, um, you know, triplexes, fourplexes, things like that, which lend, lend themselves to affordability while maintaining a good size lot as well, because it seems that there are people who want to retire and, and they want a bigger home. So it seems to be quite a mix. <clears throat> And I hope that helps uh, answer some of your questions. 
Uh, so w when you see that next phase starting, would that be maybe 2023 or? <clears throat> yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a possibility that uh, we um, put the spade in the ground come this fall, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's going to be, uh, so that means planning would have to be undertaken here in the next uh, 60 to 90 days um, or else we go in the spring. More than likely, we, we try and get our stripping and grading done in the fall because then come spring uh, with the wetter season, the undergrounds work out a little better. <clears throat> okay, so that's have... kind of our general plan uh, and we'll keep you uh, keep the town posted on that. Sure. Okay, yeah, I, I would say that we're we're very short of housing in this community right now, and um, you know certainly things seem to be on the uptick in Alberta, and um, lots of activity happening around Innisfail with uh, economic development. So we we're um, not going to say desperate to get houses built, but we're certainly needing <clears throat> houses to be built and all, all kinds of housing to be built in in the community. No, I think it's a great opportunity. You're absolutely correct. Um, your worship, this is a great opportunity to to uh, try and um, have people moving into into Innisfil. We find it's a it's a, it's a great place. It offers just about everything. It's it seems to be its geographical location, which is not too far, which is a little too far, I should say, from uh, kind of the Red Deer main population center. Uh, but I think those things will change. It's only actually when you drive. It's 15, 18 minutes to major shopping is not too far, but it's the perception. <clears throat> Anyone else have any questions for Goldie? Mm -hmm. Councillor Maceros. Thank you, Mayor <clears throat> Barkley. Yeah, you said something, you referred to doing a cleanup in Leduc, and I was just kind of curious what that looked like. Was that, like, did you take an area of older homes and demolish it and rebuild it? Or um, do you mind just telling us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, what I meant by that, and I didn't want to get into any names, there was a previous developer that had been in Leduc. We've been in Leduc now for, I believe, five and a half, six years. <clears throat> and the developer had their letter of credits pulled, and they, they had, it was pretty messy state of affairs. And the, and the city was extremely unhappy, to say the least. So this file was bothersome for them. When we walked in, we sat down with them, we worked it through. Um, took care of, uh, cleaned it up in, in that sense. Um, they had, uh, the previous developer were supposed to have constructed a, a, a uh, directional sign, um, which we ended up doing later on. And the city joint ventured with us on that. So some of those things, uh, and just, just getting things done, like the, the CCCs were up in the air. So it couldn't lead to an FAC situation. So some of the, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <clears throat> Bates. Um, yes, uh, this is Gavin Bates and Gobi. I think I heard you speak a, a, a few years back. Um, the two things that kind of ring to me is, is we definitely, in my opinion, we do want to encourage that variety of housing, which would include townhomes and spec homes. Um, we believe We've been told by re the real estate people that if that if you build it, they will sell. And uh, so I just wanted to emphasize that too, that, uh, and I know you've built your show homes and that sort of thing and they've sold, um, but we keep getting that push from real estate saying that not many developers are looking at spec homes at this point. So those are two things that, that I believe uh, we need. Yeah, we, we do have, um, we do have uh, uh, spec homes in Innisfil. Um, but the more, you know, I, we've been there for about, like I was saying, several years now, and we're vested approximately, I'd say in the tune of around $10, $11 million um, in, in, into, into the area. Um, and, and you're right, I mean, uh, I think we're, what we need to do is we need to bring in affordability and um, the way the lumber prices are these days and stuff like that, we've got to get down to a higher density, uh, you know, more of the attached home type of 
uh, uh, dwelling site that attracts younger families, affordability. Affordability seems to be the key. And uh, once we kind of get that momentum going, get, you know, 80, 100 families uh, that move into Innisfil, whether in our subdivision or someone else's, that's fine. I think it just uh, creates that momentum. <clears throat> Councillor Dunham. <clears throat> uh, Councillor Dunham here. Thank you so much both for being here today. Uh, can you maybe give us a little bit of an idea of, or I'm not sure if you have this data, whether the people that are buying are from the region, from Innisfail or Red Deer County, and where do you target your marketing? Are you targeting locals or within the county? Are you targeting to provincially or nationally? Actually, you know what, uh, we're, we're starting to do all three now. Done. <clears throat> we're, uh, we were definitely targeting the local market, and this is through some pretty conventional advertising. A big engine these days is uh, realtor.ca that uh, people go look into. We do social media marketing as well. Um, we are kind of still a little bit red in the project. We haven't uh, made any money out of it, but we will because uh, we, we play the game for the longer term. And we're also marketing provincially as well as now we've gotten into uh, kind of expanding our horizons into the GTA, the greater Toronto area, because there seems to be people moving in from there. In our Crossfield project, for example, we had 20 home sales that were sold to people out of the greater Toronto area. And uh, in Innisfil, we've had uh, five. five, I do believe from out of province. Yeah, within the last two weeks. Right. So people coming in, knocking on the door, asking questions. So there is some of that momentum. Um, so let's see where it goes. Um, and let's see what happens to the um, Bank of Canada interest rates, uh, which are going to be reviewed in March, because the inflation factor definitely are a bit of a, you know, it's, it's a worry for everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Can you tell us, Kobe, what, um, I know when you, you started this project um, three or four years ago, we were building the first house, I think the starter home was maybe, what, 279 or, or something at that time. And wh where is that price sitting now with with the supply chain shocks and the lumber prices? And Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, uh, right, uh, the, the, our, our most affordable home, which was at, uh, you were correct, 289, 299. Um, now that's into the, in the mid 300s. Um, which 349, we're trying to still keep it affordable. Like I was saying, when we did our research over the last year, the sales in, um, in this fill for the last, or oh, 2021, I suppose, um, they were sitting in around the 200 range. That include, uh, included uh, used and new homes. So, and then we defined where I mean, you can't build homes for $200,000 on a brand spanking new home on a, on, on a lot, uh, unless it's a, it's a very different kind of dwelling. But you can have a single family home in the mid 300s, 349, and 54 homes sold between 370 to 700. So I think there is an opportunity to grab a percentage of that market for sure. But um, like I said, we, need, we will be going into planning and uh, but our affordable house pricing is around 349 ish now. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone have anything else? Or so I, I guess I'll, I'll just assume that uh, you will continue discussions with the administration. CEO Becker's nodding his head over here, and um, you know maybe discuss the idea with the um, the bond versus the letter of credit, and some more information about that can come back to council and and um, see what we can do to, to help this along. And we appreciate very much uh, the work you're doing in Bella Vista. It's uh, looking good, lots of new houses being built out there. So thank you for choosing our community to do this in. Well, th thank you, thank you very much for, for inviting us. Uh, uh, you know what, uh, we, we welcome this because we do the same thing, mind you, not uh, necessarily with council every time, but twice a year we do uh, have a, uh, Bit of a brainstorming conference call that we do, Zoom call, Teams call with uh, with uh, city admin in most of the areas that we're operating under, and uh, where you know they ask us if there's something that they can help us with, and we say, hey, how can we help you guys? So let's work together and try and make this into a success story. 
So th we welcome this kind of uh, in invite. Thank you so much. Well, that's great. We, we do too. And we, um, <clears throat> I know that we will look forward to further dialogue in the future. So um, CEO Becker and Director Jenkins will certainly be discussing uh, housing as top of mind for us right now and, and a, a priority. So we, we need to keep this dialogue going. So thank you again. Thank you, folks. Take care. Okay. So we'll move on to 5.1 and correspondence. I just want to bring a couple of things to your attention in here, uh, number five and six in particular. Um, if everybody's had a chance to read this, um, I'm going to reach out to our MP and see where he's at on, on this and what his thoughts are. And I will bring that information back to council. I'm sure it has this fits into some discussions that we have had even at previous council on, on this issue and um, community standards bylaw and that kind of thing. So I don't know if there's been discussion at the police and safe communities committee about this. And then um, the other letter, number six item, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in the round table discussion. And I, I did have a discussion with Dr. Holm last week. Does anybody have any questions or comments about anything? Oh, Councillor Bates. Yeah, just a comment. I think on item five, I, I agree with your thoughts of reaching out to the MP because it seems to be not exactly our, <laughs> you know, I don't totally understand the private member's bill procedure and the whole bit, like it mentions that this, that he's retabled it and, or rebrought it up. And uh, yeah, I think that the, the proper procedure would be to reach out to the MP. Thank you. Councillor Highstead. Yeah, thanks, uh, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I, I'm totally, uh, I can, uh, I agree that uh, bringing back to uh, MP Earl Dreeshen is, is uh, appropriate to, to have the dialogue. I think it's important, though, um, when items like this are brought forward to a council, um, when we're dealing with a lot of issues in our own country with uh, hate and how people behave in public and in, in our society in our country. And I think, uh, I, I think it's appropriate to have that dialogue with uh, um, MP Dreeshen, but I do think that this is uh, fitting with our welcoming committee, um, which I'm a uh, community member of. And so is a, uh, um, one of our other councillors here, and um, I, I think there's there's an opportunity for us to to have further dialogue on this matter. I think that's and and I think that we have previously with council. So that's all I want to say today. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Oh, CEO Becker. Uh, Mayor Barkley and the council just on the transportation committee minutes, and maybe on Councillor Harrison. There's a motion made, um, which is be appropriate for council to consider and that is under item two uh business That's okay um as carrie referred to that uh what it states the committee is recommending that um a motion uh was made at the committee level for consideration to recommend that council initiate a service operation review for transit and charter bus services um so it would be appropriate uh for council to have that dialogue Get it on your action control and enact uh, administration to initiate that process. So, did you want a motion today oh. for us to? Sorry, it would be appropriate, uh, Council, to, to make that motion. Again, it's not the final result, so you yes. can make this motion um, at AMP, and it'd be appropriate to get it onto your action control before it's lost. Sure. Okay, thank you, Mayor Barkley. Maybe just uh, to uh, to further that discussion, uh, <clears throat> there 
And it goes back a couple, maybe three years. I believe there's a couple of council members that went to an FMC meeting and, and looked at some models or saw some models down there on, on regional transportation. And they brought those ideas back. And I believe they've stuck with the committee. And because we've lost the pilot on the, uh, the government pilot with the big bus, there was some discussion around, and there's still people looking for regional transportation that we uh, get administration to look into what models are out there and where, what can be done. That was the result, and the result was a recommended motion for, for council. Because I know Councillor Bates and that time Councillor Boss were there and they brought back some good ideas and they sort of didn't really go anywhere. But I think there's an opportunity now to revisit some of that along with the rest of the folks in the committee. So that was the background on it, CAO yeah. Don't thank you. Councillor Bates. Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify, seeing as my name was mentioned, the only aspect that I recall being involved in was the small unit for individual transfer. And um, I guess <laughs> I've watched that go where I think we got bigger than we should have, but that's, we'll, we'll wait and see when it gets here. I think we've got a second pace bus is what we've got. And we weren't touching on our, and I'll ask the, the CAO where it was. So you're looking at the big bus here as this is the one that, that we're trying to get some direction on. Uh, Mayor Brock, Councilor Bates, yeah, I think it's uh, the full service, including uh, the charter bus services that, the, the uh, bus. that a service review, which is really service review is really dissecting the current service and how do you make it better to meet your expectation. So it's really a full bore analysis uh, with recommendations from the committee to come back for your consideration. I think the other thing that happened in the last three years is the big bus because of an insurance situation started to get constricted in its use and then COVID has left it kind of undefined and where we're at. Well, with... I, I think we'll see in the, the, the notes here that the minutes that, um, that they're looking at the, the charter bus as well and, and hoping to keep that for the next couple of years and, and see how the service operates uh, once we get beyond the um, COVID protections that are in place today and, and move beyond that. So I think it's great timing to, to have this re review. And um, also the uh, FCM latest email that came out, was that today? I think so. Uh, there's also uh, transit funding available in there. Um, there's rural, tr rural transit solutions. I believe there's up to $250 million the federal government has has put in into this initiative. So that may be something that... Um, administration or the transportation committee can take a look at and, and maybe that is something that can help fill in with with um, the costs and and just so the newer council members know there was a previous government had a pilot project so we ran bus service uh, out of the city of red deer into spring brook penhold and innisfail for two years and it was all funded by the provincial government and and uh that that funding ended and and it just wasn't affordable for the communities to take that on i i think the the, the analysis that was done it, it turned out to cost around or the equivalent of a hundred dollars per trip so it would have been much better to send somebody on a, a taxi or something but um you know hopefully we can see some solutions i know beaumont for example they have a little autonomous bus that runs up and down 50th street there and and you kind of see in the future maybe that being a, a great uh, solution for small towns like Innisfail when uh, that technology becomes a little bit more reliable and affordable but um yeah I, I think it's good timing and i also think we, we have to make sure too that when we have community assets like uh the charter bus and and uh the the new van that's coming that those are used for appropriate outings and uh, they don't end up being somewhere that we don't want them to be, which uh, we kind of saw on the, on the weekend that happening with the community bus from a, another community in Alberta. So, so Councillor Harrison, or would somebody like to, to make a motion? Um, yeah, I'll certainly move that uh, we direct council to initiate a service operation review 
for transit and charter bus services. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? If there's nothing more on correspondence, I'll ask somebody to make a motion that we accept the correspondence as information. Mayor Barkley, I would make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Wing. All in favor? Oops. And we will move on to the round table discussion, starting with Councillor Heistad today. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I see that there's 611 is Centennial Park. So, um, I'm gonna to have to ask administration. Uh, I know I've talked about it uh, with the council as well as in administration, some of the, the issues that I've seen in, in the Centennial Park, especially in the parking lot mainly, and the uncleanliness unclean, of that um, that I see usually in the morning and it kicks around. But how do you, I just wanna ask um, CEO Becker, how do you see me presenting or talking about this subject today. I didn't know. I was just want to make sure clarity on process. You bet you, uh, uh, Member, I think Councillor Heistead, we do have a file on Centennial Park. I know the previous Policing and Safe Communities Committee as well as Council uh, and Administration had conversations really over chunks of, over the last term of Council. Um, it'd be appropriate as easy to, well, sorry, I backed up. Administration has initiated some discussion based on um, you bringing it up uh, with council, um, but appropriate would be to it be, would be appropriate just to give us a resolution again to capture in the books. Um, there's enough history there to bring it back through my to the staff to present to you some of the the history of Centennial Park, mainly the parking lot, um, and give you more detail of what has um, has occurred, some of the actions associated some of the public's concerns that uh, may um, align to with what your concerns are. So uh, really simply just to get a motion uh, on the books to, to get uh, the team here to talk to council. Sure, I'll make that motion that uh, we, we discuss Centennial Park and uh, the issues of um, community cleanliness, safety, and um, I'll make that motion. Does that help? Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Okay, carried. Okay, can I keep on going? Um, I know that uh, there's this portion of my uh, round table. I know that uh, Councillor Mazeros and myself and uh, CAO Becker were at the uh, policing committee this past week. It was a really good committee meeting. Uh, we're excited about doing um, uh, some dialogue with the community and, and some getting some feedback of a survey. I know the RCMP will also be doing a survey themselves in the near future with community policing. A uh, point that I do want to bring up, and, and I'll allow my colleague, Councillor uh, Mazeros, to jump in there as well, um, is the, the RCMP, the community uh, citizens that represent uh, the policing committee, uh, have given us, um, myself and Councillor Maceros, uh, that ability to come forward and say that they support uh, our RCMP, the provincial RCMP, and that the Alberta Police Service or force that this government is wanting to, uh, to you know, uh, engage communities on, uh, they're in full support of the local uh, Innisfail RCMP and the work that they do. Um, a couple of points that I do want to make is uh, 100, I think it's $128 million is um, brought in from the feds. They support community policing in the province. And if, if we were to change that in 2023, uh, this current government, that would be uh, roughly $128 million. That'd be the taxpayers uh, funding, provincial taxpayers. Just wanted to, to bring that up. I don't know if Councillor Maceros, do you want to jump in on this one? I know this is. I think you're hitting all the spots, Councillor Heistead. Thanks. Okay. But that was something that I wanted to make sure that we both brought up. Um, and if there's any more advocacy or how we work with Council on that, I know it's we're kind of in a different situation where it's a 
it's a community committee and and our role is is we're kind of in the middle on that one similar to the b the the letter that we got from today in our correspondence so uh, i think that's really important information to bring forward from the committee that's why we have committees yeah. for, for them to do that and and um i don't know we, we have we did send a letter of support previous council to um in support of the rcmp i don't know see you back do you think we need another letter of support or where are we at but i don't think i guess part of what i would like to see of course i, I would like to see council yeah. i know most of you have signed up for the virtual meeting with the um the price waterhouse report and the alberta provincial police service so i, I think it'd be wise to listen to that first and um, then see where everybody's at. And I, I've been fortunate enough to hear both sides so far, but um, I would like to see the rest of council brought up to speed on, on that side of things. And then maybe another letter at that point in time, or? Perhaps uh, Mayor Barkley, um, I know members of council are registered for the leadership caucus. I know the AM president uh, just released uh, an email recently on the projected cost to municipalities. Um, with with our CMP, so I'm sure policing will be a, a topic at the leadership caucus. Yes, yeah, but thank you, Councillor Heistad, for uh, bringing that forward from the committee for sure. Thanks. Um, just a couple more quick things. I like the Bill of Vista conversation. I think there's uh, opportunities there, potentially working with our town and our realtors promoting Innisfail. It was interesting to hear that how many people have come into the town from Bill of Vista, and. Um, no, the, the only other thing that I would, I, I did mention it the last round table or a couple of round tables of the age friendly meeting that I was at about um, administrative wise is bathrooms in the community. If, if we're going to look at, you know, having washrooms throughout our community, 12 months a year, uh, administratively, do I have to put another motion on the table for that? Or should we just that's what I that's what I'm learning my I'm still learning my new role is to making sure that I'm not uh, going outside the lines. So what do you need CAO Becker? Uh, Mayor Burke, the Councilor I said depends what you want. Um, um, is it a conversation with Council? Is, is this a priority of, of, of Council? Um, you want administration to take action? Uh, we only take action um, ultimately through a resolution. Okay. So it was a recommendation through age friendly. So um, I will make a motion that uh, we uh, we actually look at having outdoor facilities in our community. Um, and if administration could have that conversation with council. So I, I know last term we had a um discussion around outdoor facilities at the ball diamonds on the outside of the pool. I believe at that time the cost was, I don't know, was it 300,000, 350,000 or something? We decided not to proceed just because of budgetary constraints. Um, I know there's been discussion, I believe, around leaving facilities open, even in the off season, say at the year of the arena and stuff, so people can access from the ball diamonds and so are, are you looking for no, another outdoor like no your worship i'm not asking for um i'm just asking that we consider and have that further discussion on it um as to the three hundred fifty thousand dollar price tag that's not that's not the wish uh from it'd be just like outdoor porta potties kind of thing in the winter time where people can you know if you're walking around town centennial park is used 12 months a year it's not used four months a year oh, and uh it, I, I think that we should consider consider it it's not about having a real fancy bathroom in three or four areas in town it's just having port of likely porta parties are that availability for people to go to washroom that's it that's what okay. they brought forward okay. so that's why i brought forward the motion is that doable director kennedy or ceo becker yeah, I think what we'll do, um, based on council approving the motion, we'll have a ministry of chat um, and just kind of zone in it, try to understand exactly. Um, and to start at Centennial Park, for example, obviously yeah, we have a shelter there. Um, what would it cost to heat it? So I think we'd start there and, and just have a conversation uh, and, and take your direction from there just to, sure. to really 
try to capture the vision, but I think we can, uh, we'll, we'll start with administration and then bring it back to see if we're on the mark. Yep. Sounds great. <laughs> Councillor Bates. Yeah, I think the CAO has kind of captured it. I think it would be probably fruitful to have that little discussion because you could you could uh, cover what it costs to build what we have in Centennial Park and project again. I think it was affected by COVID too. We shut it down more than it would have normally been shut down. So I don't even remember what we used to run it. But yeah, you could give us a little. And then perhaps Councillor Highstead could also maybe list the number of places that hit the age-friendly radar um, as to where these facilities might be desirable. But I think a little dialogue would would go a long way maybe. Yeah. Th th thank you. Thanks. That's it. Okay, thank you. So there's a motion on the table, all in favor? Okay, carried. And Councillor Harrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barkley, uh, and the rest of the council. Yeah, I attended strategic planning for a day and a half and found it uh, very informative. Looking forward to the final plan being completed and we can, <clears throat> excuse me, get to work on it. Also sat in <clears throat> on a, <clears throat> excuse me, housing 101 and uh, very informative. Uh, a lot of things that I certainly didn't know about seniors and community housing. And there's another, uh, part one of the five part series that's taking place tomorrow morning. So I'll be sitting in on that and it's all around and seniors housing, housing for homelessness. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Leadership caucus, uh, I'm not gonna be attending in person. I've let uh, our <clears throat> illustrious care know that I'll attend virtual. I, I don't think it's an expense that the town can, uh, I justify for myself anyways I can attend it from here as long as we have some council representation or mayor's representation face to face I think that's good so I won't won't, won't be attending um yeah I think uh I think that's about it uh yeah I think that's about it for my okay thank you and Councillor Maceros Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. And thank you, Councillor Highstead, for bringing forward what <clears throat> that important point from uh, our meeting with the policing committee. Um, and just kind of, yeah, I guess there was something further to that. Um, there was a number of tools brought forward, suggested to us by um, the chair, uh, and they're on a website called RCM. Oh shoot, what was it? <clears throat> Police, police free, or I can't quite remember. I'll have to come back with that. <clears throat> um, and uh, we, they talked about um, the twenty thousand dollar budget allocation and bringing in an expert to help define the scope of the community safety plans. And um, great reports from our um, RCMP representative, Chris Matichuk, and also from Gary Leith. And uh, one of the things we talked about is the importance of stating what a fantastic job they're doing in the community. Um, so I would just like to kind of mention that as well. And we welcomed our youth representative, Zach Poulton, and he uh, he's going to be of a force in that uh, committee. He was excellent. Um, also went to strategic planning, and I'm excited about us, the council and admin um, being focused on um, moving forward with our strategic actions. Um, that was a, was a great day and a half. So thank you. Thank you, and Councillor Dunn. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, I as well attended the strategic planning with uh, strategic steps. Uh, it was actually my first time being part of a planning workshop uh, like they had, and I was really impressed with the format. Uh, I look forward to seeing the strategic plan, as other councillors have mentioned, uh, once it's brought back to us from Ian and his team, and then going forward, what we do with it. Um, the 16th, I attended the Chamber of Commerce board meeting as Councillor Wing's alternative, and it was my first um, chance to be a part of it, and it was, uh, it was an interesting evening. I had an opportunity to listen to the 
to the executive speak to what projects are coming up and how they're going to implement them and just bandwidth or capacity, which was very interesting. I look forward to perhaps being able to attend again in the future. As well, on Thursday, I was able to attend the Housing 101 elect for elected officials. Uh, I definitely feel that there's much more conversation that we need to have and would like to delve a little bit deeper into understanding what programs are available um, on the provincial level for that. Um, and then not as a role as a counselor, but as a role as a member of the WIC committee on Thursday evening, we had our first community conversation around bullying. And it was attended by uh, several different social organizations or representatives thereof uh, from the town as well. Um, and it was a great evening where we really had an open dialogue around what is happening in the community. Uh, Constable Nelson, who is the RCMP uh, liaison with, with, the, uh, with the schools, sort of filled us in on what his role is and what he's been doing. And then uh, Brian George from the YES program spoke to his work and what opportunities we may have to backfill some uh, gaps that there are within the schools to, to be able to help out and to try and get a, a better handle on what's happening with bullying in the community. I mean, that's not just an, an Innisfail situation. It's all over the place. But uh, I think uh, it was a really good first step. We're going to be having our second community conversation around it in March. And we are already in the works of everyone there of working together uh, in November for the bullying week to get some events in town here. Great. Thank you. And Councillor Wing. Thank you, Mayor Barkley. Um, yeah, as my colleagues have said, I very much enjoyed the strategic planning session last Monday and Tuesday. Certainly look forward to receiving the draft report. Uh, I enjoyed uh, having administration participate with us. I thought that was really valuable. And of course, thanks to the lovely Kara for attending to all of our needs and details. Um, that evening, on Tuesday evening, actually, uh, following the strategic planning, I was able to participate in the uh, Innisfil Public Library Board meeting. Um, in spite of COVID, the library's finances appear to be in good shape. We're just getting ready to go into audit coming up in March, April, so we'll learn more then, but there's truly no concerns. Thanks to Director Vickers for her assistance with the reserves policy that's being created. Um, they, the, the board is doing some really good work there. Um, library will be participating in the trade show. Um, they have experienced significant increase in usage over the past year. However, council will be receiving a, re a presentation in a few weeks. So I'll save all that really good news for the library folks to share. And I do have a Parkland Regional Library Provincial Board meeting coming up this week. Um, attended Housing 101 for elected officials last Thursday. I feel like there's a lot more to uncover there relative to affordable housing opportunities, both provincially and federally. So I, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to sit in there. Um, Thanks, Dale. I participated in the bullying conversation last Thursday evening, which was facilitated by Councillor Dunham. Great leadership. Thank you for that. Um, we, I feel like we do have a great depth of connected organizations and agencies and programs in Innisfil, which is um, huge, strong ties for dealing with difficult conversations and difficult issues like this. So certainly look forward to more opportunities to educate the general public general community about the challenges that are being faced by our kids, our schools and other places and activities where the children are. So thanks for that. It's a good week. Thank you. And Councillor Bates. So we all attended the strategic plan. Um, I do look forward to seeing how it gels down. And then I think one of the things we'll have to look at is discussing the prioritizing of all of the uh, potential expenditures, because that's going to be the the interesting part of it. And certainly from the discussion, whatever money's left over, we'll be able to, to use for recreation in one way, shape or form to be determined. Um, I also attended the, the Zoom on Housing 101. I think we should have an Innisfail discussion. Um, I got as much from some of the texts that were floating back and forth amongst the councillors as I did out of the actual. So I think we need to to look specifically at Innisfail what we've what we have been able to achieve uh, with Autumn Grove and and other things. Um, <clears throat> and I did uh, 
attend the uh, the bullying uh, meeting. It was educational to me, always is, and, and uh, never get tired of listening to Constable Nelson's experiences um, and the others. They were all they were all really good. Uh, the one thing that I picked out of there, Karen mentioned the great disconnect being broadcast again a, a couple of times, and I think we could we should encourage. I know not all, all of council has seen it yet, but I think we should look at it and perhaps encourage it as being kind of a foundation to pivot a lot of the different social things like bullying and that sort of thing off of. And uh, that's just my thoughts. Um, I won't be involved in the uh, budget discussion this Friday because I'm going to be down at the Calgary Home Show. And, um, the leadership caucus, my feelings um, are kind of echoing um, Councillor Harrison's. Um, if I look at, I think if our, if we have representation, and I understand at least we will have some with mayor and CAO, um, that, that virtual probably is the economical way to go. Um, I, I'm available to do either. I, I, I go with the council, but um, I personally believe virtual would be the economic way to, to do it for the town, for most of us councillors. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bates. Um, so yeah, strategic planning. Um, thanks to all of council and the senior leadership team for the great dialogue we had uh, over that day and a half. It was, it was very good. Uh, just back to the, the letter we received from Dr. Wollstenholm. Uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon at the Red Deer Regional Hospital. And he's also a representative for the Society for Hospital Expansion, as you can see, Central Alberta. So some of the more urgent areas that he discussed with me are capacity limitation issues at the Red Deer Regional Hospital. And that is due to a shortage of anis that, yes, thank you, and, and nurses. And um, in his opinion, uh, that really speaks to recruitment issues. Uh, they've reached out to Red Deer Pollock Technique to try and get some more information on who ultimately decides on enrollment. I uh, haven't quite had the, the clear answers they're looking for yet, but they continue to work on that. Um, and just to give you an idea how this is affecting his practice, he spends one to one and a half days per week performing surgeries at this time. So he completes maybe six to eight per month, but he's booking 50 to 70 per month. So you can imagine that the backlog that's taking place and, and it has nothing to do with COVID. Uh, they were having personnel leave the zone, some to other zones, specifically Calgary and Edmonton, due to better, better work schedules. Gave me an example of, you know, nurses on his specialty team. They may have to work nights, you know, every week where they go to Calgary, and that might take place one, once a month. So it, it's uh, difficult to attract. Um, also, some have left for out of province. Uh, he feels infrastructure issues are making it very difficult to attract people to this zone and to to the Red Deer Hospital is there are only eight to nine operating theaters and there's a very small pool of people to resource that which makes it uh, very hard to attract and retain. He's had very good dialogue with Minister LaGrange on this issue and his hopeful announcement on the hospital will be made this week in the budget. But what concerns him of course is how do they bridge between what is taking place now and when uh, there will be more capacity built in. Um, also, just to give you an idea that the lack of hospital infrastructure investment, uh, there was a piece that came out today in the Sylvan Lake News, uh, MLA Dreeshen shared it, uh, between 2008 and 18, the Central Zone received $228 per person as their share of infrastructure investment, or our, our share, I should say, and you compare that to Calgary, where the per person investment was $1,633. North Zone was $2,086. The South, $1,513. And Edmonton, $1,118. So we can see clearly that the Central Zone has certainly been left behind as far as um, spending. So my plan is to speak to Mayor Wood and Mayor Johnson this week. Um, Dr. Wooston Home has all had reached out to them. So I want to see where, where they sit with this. And, and maybe what can we do with a, a region? And, and like I said, I, I hope we'll hear an announcement about the, the hospital sometime this week. Um, and I was at the Red Deer, South Red Deer Regional Wastewater Commission Friday. Um, 
very few issues. Um, everything seems to be operating well, even through the cold weather. It looks like Director Kennedy that they have um, put the the plan in, in place on, on where the, the pond is going. And I think that suits what, what you had, had said. So um, maybe reach out to them because it, it looks like everything's kind of getting set up to to proceed this year. Uh, later in the year, they're trying to avoid, I think, the the summer, uh, just thinking that it's going to be very busy with construction and, and kind of looking at maybe getting better pricing later in the year. Also attend at the Asia Housing 101 for elected officials. I agree with Councillor Bates. Um, you know, we, we need to have a, an Innisfail discussion. We need to understand where Innisfail is at, what we have in this community. And I, I know in prior council, we had Bethany come forward and do a presentation to us. And I think that would be re really beneficial uh, at some point in time. And, and maybe going forward, uh, housing is, like I said, a, a very much a priority for us that we need to build out a, a housing strategy and, and where we're going because we can't be going 10 different directions and, and try to uh, and get anything accomplished. And we need to focus on what our top priorities are. Um, this morning, I was invited to par take part in a panel presenting with the Primary Healthcare Integrated Geriatric Services Initiative, which is known as FIGZ. That's what I will refer to it as. Um, my role at this was to bring a perspective to participants on how municipal councils and organizations who deliver programs and services in our communities can work better together. Uh, there's excellent work taking place in the province and you know, it was a good reminder, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but rather build upon best practices and certainly um, building community capacity and sustainability is, is a focus. Uh, I know we are very well served here by FIGSI, uh, the Innisfil Medical Clinic, Alberta Health Services and Karen and um, Sandy and FCSS and a huge thank you to all of them for leading the way and delivering such great community care. And I, I know that, you know, Innisfail is certainly um, put on a pedestal in, in many ways with, with this organization. And uh, of course, the, the Canada grant um, that Innisfail is a part of, there's more work taking place. And I, I look forward to, to that being built out. Um, as I said, FCM email today, there's some transit funding availability there for rural transit solutions, as well as active transportation, which focused on walking and cycling infrastructure. So um, maybe um, CEO Becker can have um, people look into that and, and as well as the transportation committee. And then um, following up on Director Kennedy's presentation last week on the uh, waste management, uh, particularly around adding a third bin for recycling to our stream, I would like, um, and for us asking for more specifics on this, but I, I'd like to make a motion to this respect. Uh, so my motion would be that we direct administration to bring back information to council regarding the cost of adding the third stream of a recycling bin, as well as the ability for households to add additional bins if needed. And also uh, the cost of expanding the organics program to weekly pick up earlier in the spring and later in the fall than what we currently have it. And then also maybe pulling back the program in the winter to whether it's maybe once a month pick up if that suits. But I, I think I've you know, seen and certainly heard from residents of the last couple of years. Uh, we seem to be have earlier springs and later falls and people are still doing yard work and, and the, the bin was, wasn't available for pickup every week. And, and so I would like for us to take a look at that if possible. So does anybody have any discussions or questions around that motion? I would ask all in favor. Okay, carried. And that's the end of my report. So I think we need a motion now to move in camera. Mayor Barclay, I'll make that motion that we move to in camera. Okay, thank you, Councillor Dunham. All in favor? Thank you.